Hello there, welcome along. This is Business Connections Live. Great to have your company as always. I'm Steve Highland, and boy, have we got, a, as always, a cracking show lined up for you. If you're a small business, small to medium scale enterprise, and you're thinking about starting a business, this is the place to go. We've got great hints, we've got great tips for you. And this evening, we're going to be looking at the world of starting an internet business. What do you do when you come up with that great money spinning idea? Who do you turn to? How do you actually get your idea? up there on the internet so you will generate some income for you and I suppose importantly too will the idea that you've come up with will it turn into something that's going to provide an income stream for you if it doesn't what do you do then but if it's something that's going to be a bit of a slow burn how do you go about financing that how do you go about building that business uh, with me this evening I've got a lovely fella his name's Phil Smith he's from a company called Soundtrack to your to your.com. It's an interesting name. We'll find out more about it in just a moment. But Phil Smith, soundtrack to your.com is the name of the company. Phil Smith is the guest with me this Hi. evening. Phil, great to have you here. Let, let's get rid of the elephant that's in the room, first of all, shall we? The name, where did that come from? Ah, oh, the name, soundtrack to your.com. Because it sounds like it's nearly finished, doesn't it? Does, it? That's <laughs> the thing, really. It, it, it's essentially that's the point. It's all about it almost being finished. The original idea actually came bizarrely at a friend's funeral, which I appreciate isn't a tip top start to the evening. Probably not. But it's, it's the truth. He was quite a comedian, he was a great, great fella, and what he did is he, uh, he got cremated, of all things. It's a very, very odd place I've never been to before. And I know it sounds bizarre, but essentially this is uh, a crematorium where the, the coffin goes down into the ground and disappears into the wherever it is that it goes <laughs> to, to, to be cremated. I don't know what I'm cremated. laughing, it's not a very happy story so far. <laughs> it's not looking the best. The point being is, is that George, my friend, was a comic, and his heart, he was a very funny guy. So what he actually did is on his last song, as the coffin goes into the ground, he had Tina Turner, Simply mm -hmm. the Best, because it was his darts song. He was a darts player. Right. Who knew? And as the coffin goes into the ground, all you can hear, and the whole of the congregation erupted with laughter, was, in a world of flames, <laughs> you're simply the best. And I sort of, the penny dropped. People like to use music to be a soundtrack to their lives, or end of in this instance. I mean, for a long time, people you you used to say that your formative years, the music that really meant something all the way through your life was when you were 18. And I think really to a certain extent that's kind of changed now isn't it we I think so. we have different categories we have different types of music that we listen to and of course i suppose we get into our cars and we we put our cds in and we listen to particular tracks but you're a little bit different isn't it you it's nearly going back to the days of putting together the mix cassette it is and and and, and also going back if you like to the really really old days of having record shops where you could go and ask people what sort of music do I want for my Aunt Bessie's birthday? She likes music, but I don't really know what a 50-year-old woman likes. And somebody would tell you, and you would buy on the basis of it. We've crowdsourced all of those sort of informational sources so that it's all there for anybody to pick into now. So if you do want to know what nurses like to dance to on a summer holiday, we will be able to tell you. There you are, you're at this funeral, an embryonic idea springs mm. into your head. How long did it actually take for you to maybe go back and come up with the actual concept, the idea. I mean, obviously you spoke to some other friends. You've got a technical background, haven't you? So I have originally got a technical background, but it's so old now that only me and Noah know how, to, how it works. <laughs> so you're very good at building arcs. <laughs> 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 so, so, I mean, how long then between the embryonic idea and actually getting something together? And, and did you do it on your own or was it a group of you? It's, it's a group of friends and technologists and, and sort of creative sorts. Because essentially what, what it was is about 2010, the idea sort of started to coalesce and come into my mind. And from there on then I started to really think, not just in so much as the, the funeral soundtrack to your funeral, which is actually its original name. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, it could well be your. It could, could very be, well could be, that be, could be on the headstone when you go, <laughs> couldn't it? <laughs> One of many, I suspect, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> let's not do that now. No, no, we're, we're but, away. The, but uh, the idea really was is how people actually use and consume. Ooh, yep. I think your website's working. Yeah, there we go. I'll just get rid of that. There we go. Yeah, carry on. Funny message. <laughs> <laughs> it's really how we use and consume music in our lives, really. It's, it's the fact that we all have great music that sort of we like to run to or we like to listen to when we're on the bus going to work or, you know, we, we remind us of our holidays, remind us of lovers future and past, it reminds us of the stuff that we had at our wedding, first record we bought. And we thought, well, if you had a record shop where you chopped all this up into these categories, into these new genres of the way that we use music, 
it's a measure much more interesting and useful for people like you or I or anybody else to actually go and find new music to listen to. And it's all about that, crowdsourcing musical taste. This is very different from the traditional way, isn't it? Because most companies these days, they categorise things either by artist or by title or even by the label. But, but here what you're doing is you're doing it by an emotion, aren't you? And, and, by or its, time. Use, and its usage as well and, and the memory it creates with you. So it might be an activity, it might be the stuff I like to listen to when I'm ironing or baking. Or it could be the stuff I like to listen to when I'm running. Or it just could be the stuff that reminds me of my school days that takes me back to that time. It, it's whatever I feel I'm into. And that's what the site's there for, to give you your memories and others. So you're, you're thinking to yourself, you've got this idea, this, this marvellous idea, and what was the next step then for you? What, did you? what did you have to do then? Was it a case of looking around the market and going, crikey, there are other people out there doing something that's very similar? I mean, for instance, I suppose when we start talking about this, there are a number of different organisations, different companies yeah. who are doing something that is it's similar. I suppose the moment you start dealing with music, then you've opened the genre of it all being similar. Yes. Well, that's the thing, really. Is the, the, you're absolutely right. It's a huge marketplace. I mean, the, the, the values and the, the users are astonishing. But just to, to put some sort of marker in it, you've got over 500 legal providers of digital music mm -hmm. on online right now. You've got quadruple that, which are illegal. And they do say that one in four of us uh, actually pays for music online. The rest still do not. So you've got music which is almost for free now. Most of us, whether we truthfully believe it or are prepared to say it publicly, there's a terrible suspicion that the majority of us expect our music to be free. It comes with your iPhone, it comes in your car. You know, it's a, it's a part of our life rather than uh, almost a consumable part of our life. And we're trying to change that and make it actually much more valued to you, the person. Because if it's valued to you, the person, it'll have value to other people. The music that is That's on the website, different. and I would imagine this is an absolute copyright minefield, the music that is on the website, who does it belong to? Wh whose is it? Is it mine? Is it yours? Is, it obviously still belongs to the publisher of the piece of music in some way or another. So who does it belong to? For instance, I went to the site, I'm not a member of the site today, I went on there and I was listening to Aerosmith. And I thought, well, wh who does that belong to? Well, th the way it actually works at the moment is, is that it is a completely legal service completely legal and what we actually do is we uh, we use pre-licensed um, libraries of music both from YouTube and another provider called SoundCloud uh, that that's the way that you get to, uh, to hear all the music that you actually want to listen to through the site so it's pre-licensed by YouTube and it's pre-licensed by SoundCloud and if those two particular fonts of getting your music don't actually work then we play you a 30 second clip of the music from the iTunes library so everything that we do is actually configured with legally acceptable to all concerned. It sounds extremely complicated. What, it was is. It, was this, <laughs> <laughs> I would imagine it, it must have been like walking through a minefield when you actually started the idea of selling it into businesses like YouTube and also selling the concept to the likes of iTunes. Was that a major issue? I mean, was A, was it difficult to get in contact with these people to find the right person to talk to? And then, once you're sitting in front of them, was it a difficult sell to, for them to see the benefit of what you were doing with the website? One of the great benefits, actually, about um, being a website as opposed to anything else is, is that if you look at iTunes, they, have, uh, they already have a system set up in place where our programmers, our coders, our architects can go in there, deal with their infrastructure and build our product to fit with theirs. Completely legal, as they expect. And there's a system set up for that with iTunes, as indeed there are with uh, lots and lots of other of the major players like Deezer and Spotify and many others. So there's already um, infrastructure in place that we can write code to work with to affect us building our site. So it's not actually the legal hell that you might consider, it's the technical hell. Because obviously all of these different things have their own incredibly brilliant infrastructures that our poor guys have to find a way of working with, which they immeasurably do. So if somebody else did come up with an idea very similar to yours, they, they, it would be a relatively straightforward, albeit complicated, but a straightforward path to fulfilment of, of their actual idea. It would be a doddle. It would be 
A doddle. A doddle. No, it wouldn't. No, it wouldn't. <laughs> I, I can't believe that for one moment. I mean, it does sound absolutely fascinating. And I, is it your first internet business? I mean, it you, is. your background is technical. You've done sales. Uh, you've I'm run a creative a as well. And some creative as mm. well. A recruitment company as uh -huh. well you were involved with. Was that your own recruitment company? It was. It was one that I worked with a f couple of friends for a few years, and we had quite a lot of fun working in the computer industry. Um, yeah, providing exact search, headhunting, and that sort of stuff. So, the and we're going to get onto this in more detail, but if you had to sum it up in a couple of words, what was the big difference between running a conventional business where you've got customers who are coming in or at least contacting you uh, by the telephone. The recruitment industry springs to mind there. It's quite a simple formula, isn't it? You find the job, you find someone to match the job, and then you take a percentage of the introduction fee, mm. uh, maybe. But, but when you're doing it with the internet, how, how difficult and how much have you had to learn to do an internet business to be your own boss? To be an internet business, it's, um, well, first and foremost, I'm one of three co-founders in this, and that's an important thing, because when it comes to actually putting the business together, I honestly, I know this doesn't sound great, but serendipity was a huge amount of this. On the one hand, um, Sarah, one of the co-founders, is completely fine. This is serendipity, is it? That's business <laughs> serendipity, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but she bootstrapped the entire project and she's also bought project skills from her time working at Logica and CMG and large sort of infrastructure, IT companies rather like that. And then we had the absolute genius which she brought to bear which was our CTO, a guy called Pete Stevens who's an absolute genius and even finished working at one point to go and do a PhD just to get even cleverer. And now he's come back and he's designed this system that's astonishing so can't stand people like that he's he, he also looks like daniel craig I, the man couldn't be more unfeasibly unpopular in my mind <laughs> <laughs> listen we're, go we're going to come back more we'll talk a little bit more about the sure. actual conception and bringing the business and how you go about funding and how you go about promoting it i know before we started the program you were saying to me that one of the the big promises is actually getting that that mass behind you yeah and then at some stage i suppose in the future you are going to be saying to yourself yes we well, would like to make money in fact we'd like to be in a position i'm sure your exit plan in the future is to sell the business for a vast amount of money and drive around in a rolls royce or a, a nice bentley not really actually no i'm not kind of no it's not it's, i don't really want to i want to be involved in it i actually love the idea that the whole point of it is is that once you get into this do you remember that time when you used to go into somebody's house and look through their record collection and it felt like you got a little window into their soul this is it digitally speaking so I can't not be involved in it. I just, my nose, it just has to be sort of looking it at these things. has to be in there looking. Sorry, Listen, yeah. we'll, we'll come back and we'll talk a little bit more about, about the whole project and everything that you've done. It's an absolutely fascinating um, website. If you want the opportunity, obviously, Phil Smith is uh, my guest. Uh, the website is soundtrack to your dot com. So it's soundtrack to your all one word, dot com. Uh, just go there, you'll find the site. It's absolutely fascinating. Uh, we'll find out a little bit more about some of the different uh, playlists that they've got on there. But the thing that is really terrific is that if you've got a favourite celebrity, the chances are they've got their list of favourite songs on there as well. And that really does give you a little bit of an insight into personalities that you see every day, maybe on the television or you hear on the radio. So it is a real insight into their soul. And, and maybe, as Phil was saying, that's what's so unique about that. And perhaps maybe... Isn't that what you need to be looking for? Something that's got that unique edge. If your site is just another Me Too site, is that what's going to hold you back in the long run? If you've got a site that's unique, it's got that unique angle to it, is that the thing that's going to be successful and be the thing that's actually going to make your money? I mean, it's not going to be an easy job, I can promise you that. All right, then let's um, give you a bit of a reminder about one of our other programs right now. Uh, you might remember a couple of weeks back, before we had Christmas, before we had the new year, uh, we were talking to Sarah Dobson from the AA and we were talking company cars. That's another minefield that you'd really don't want to get into uh, unless you're buying a brand new new car of course what's the best way as a small business to actually finance your car how should you be considering that what should you be doing well Sarah very knowledgeable lady she gave us the real insight in what you should be doing when it comes to company cars on Business Connections Live Many companies or many employees actually have a bit of an issue when it comes to company cars they don't know whether they should buy them should they purchase the car? Should they lease hire it? Should they go into the company scheme? Should they be out of a company scheme? What car should they be going after? What's the best way to finance it? The list 
goes on and on and on. And hopefully tonight we're going to be able to resolve all that for you. Uh, my guest this evening is the lovely Sarah Dobson. She's the fleet manager from the AA, in charge of fleet. J just to give us a bit of an insight into the AA, just yep. how big an organisation is it when it comes to looking after their vehicles, Sarah? We've got about 8,000 vehicles on the fleet, ranging from commercial vehicles to driving school and company cars. They need to be realistic from the outset of what mileage they're going to cover. Um, although the rental may be slightly more expensive per month, um, it means that you won't get hit by excess mileage charges at the back end. Excess mileage charges can be anything from 6p to 15p to 20p, and that's an awful lot of money per mile every mile that you go over that allowance. There are schemes that do it on a ad hoc basis, and a lot of leasing companies as well will do it on a short-term rental, which typically is about three months. You are paying a premium for that though, so um, you are super loaded with that and also the um, return standards when the vehicle is returned are an awful lot higher, um, the mileage constraints are an awful lot higher um, and, and it's typically only best practice to use that if you are thinking about going into a longer term vehicle. From a company car perspective, um, drivers are more excited about getting a replacement car every th three years rather than actually owning it and having to worry about where they're going to dispose of it, who they're going to dispose it through, what value they're going to get for it, how much they have to repay a separate loan back for it. Um, so I don't think it's too much of an issue. As essential business use, then I do think that having a company car scheme is probably the best way to manage that. Um, the best way to go and do it as well is via a contract management company mm -hmm. so they will do everything for you so um, they will maintain the car they will service the car they will provide the f um, fines for the car the license the, the road front license etc definitely ensure that you've got a policy in place um, ensuring that the driver has actually signed that policy so he understands what he has to do and what his driver responsibilities are um, making sure that you understand what the whole life cost of that vehicle is from the outset so knowing what your service maintenance costs are going to charge you um, understanding what your MPG is and what your fuel is going to be um, and also ensuring that you understand from the outset what miles you're going to cover and what term of the vehicle, contract term of that vehicle you're going to lease it over. Sarah Smith, a very knowledgeable young lady, and if you are thinking about getting yourself your company car, uh, really the AA have got all the advice. You find a lot of information, in fact, on their website, uh, theaa.com, great site to go to as well. Uh, of course, one of the most popular visits for most motorists these days is, of course, their navigation um, software, their package that is on there, and you'll find that it's probably the most popular part of the site, but loads of traffic going there, and if you do want to find out about company cars, maybe right down to the simple stuff, like how much you should be charging if you're your freelance to your clients for every mile that you travel. The advice is there. Sarah Dobson from the AA and if you want to watch the entire program just simply go on to our website that's uh, businessconnectionslive.com check that out and uh, everything there it is. But it's all there. You've got the email as well if you want to contact us, but it's all sitting there in front of you if you want to see a little bit more about Sarah Dobson or any of the other programmes. And if you're watching this on YouTube, don't worry, the ads are nearly finished. But if you are watching this on YouTube, please don't forget to subscribe because we know where you live and we'll be around to, to haunt you if you don't subscribe right now. <laughs> uh, my guest this evening is Phil Smith from Soundtrack to Your... Dot com. Yes, I know it sounds like it's a name that isn't quite finished, but what they're saying is it's a soundtrack to your... Well, everything to your life. It can be to your life, to your marriage, to your workday. It's all there. You fill in the gap where you think another word should be. Soundtrack to your.com. Check out the site. Absolutely fascinating. We, we were just chatting there during, um, while Sarah was on, how rude of us. <laughs> but uh, you, are, you, you do enjoy the technology of all of this. I mean, I it, it's half of that what attracted you to an internet business, the fact that it's, it kind of satisfies so many different roles. Yeah, I think so, yeah. I think that, yeah, it's the technical side, but it's also the brilliant thing about the internet, seems to me, is the, the, the astonishing sort of information that starts to come out, uh, out of things like Wikipedia, out of people, lots and lots and lots of people using a service, all of a sudden sort of throws up sorts of content that we've never seen before. You know, Facebook and Twitter, completely fill our airwaves this, these days. Why? Because everybody's involved in the creation of new content. And yeah, that's one of the things about the internet is amazing. And that's why I think music needs this overhaul to get us back involved with it. What initially then, when you were getting the business running, was the first 
major hurdle to get over. What was it? What, was it the, the, the con conceptually actually stepping your way through what you wanted the site to do so that you were clear what the business plan of the site was? Or was it the, the financing? I mean, I don't know how you finance it, but I'm sure we'll find out. With how you financed it, who wrote the code, where you went to get the tracks. I mean, what, were the, what was the big problem when you started? When, when you first started, I think the, the, the simple thing was this, um, particularly with a simple idea like this, let's just have a music site. <laughs> what could go wrong? <laughs> <laughs> when you have a simple idea like that, and you realise that you want to change the way that everybody fundamentally looks and thinks about the music in their life, it's, it's a simple idea. The first thing you've got to do is to find somebody um, to bootstrap it, which I was lucky enough to do. That was the first key to thing, uh, financially bootstrap Oh, right, OK. So essentially say, OK, we're going to put X amount of money into a fund. We're going to produce more than a prototype, a sort of perpetual beta version of our service that we're providing, which is where we are now. So to get somebody to agree to go the whole nine yards to do that was a really tough sale. So who do you approach then? I mean, are you going to business angels to get that kind of no, funding? No, no, this, is, is, this, is, within the this is within the group of people who are a part and parcel. Of the, this is one of the co-founders. So you raise some money yourself? Yes, essentially, but by essentially getting one of our co-founders to do so, and that's why she is a, a key critical part of the COG, uh, Sarah Byrne. And then that's the first one that you have to sell. If you can't sell that one, you're definitely, definitely working hard on your own. The second one was obviously getting somebody with the... Uh, the technical, uh, astonishing the technical skills that Pete Stevens brought to bear with all of his network of people. And we're talking again about marvellous technologists with incredible ideas who've really altered the way that we think about, never mind how you will think about music, you know, they're that good. So those are the two huge obstacles. And as I said, I'm very lucky with both of those. Sarah's been instrumental in providing one and provided the introduction to, uh, to the technical guy. Now, I, I know this may be a bit of a leading question because I know you have spent countless hours working on this and I suppose when you are a new business startup and you're trying to get an idea out there, for some strange reason those, those countless business hours seem to become for free and oh, you just work and you work and you work and you work because you're, you're after this ideal. But to, to get as far as you got, I mean, what, what, dare I ask, what kind of sum are we looking at? You can dare to ask, but... I'm, but you I'm, won't answer. I'm not an answer, no, but it was, um, it's a significant sum of money. So a significant sum of money to get as far. So do you think that can actually be a bit of a... It, it, could that be a, a full stop in the whole project? You work your way down so far and you realise that you can't afford to actually get this internet business up and running. Or would you have approached it a different way? What would you have done? No, I think we've, we've always approached it this way. And I, I st we stand by it in so much as that where we are now is we now got to the the most functionality we've ever, we've ever been able to share with our user base, which is considerably growing. I think we're up to 3,000 now or something along those lines and growing. We've built up our social media capital, which is, I'm sure you know, is, um, Very is an arduous but important job to, to get done. And uh, that's that we've been driving that. And of course, that, that works in tandem with the site as well. But at this point now, we're going to our stage two, which is essentially to go for serious, more serious funding, which is now going to take us to a, a commercially viable route where we can now fund ourselves and get revenue and actually manage to pay for a cup of tea every now and then. Well, I must admit, I mean, how long has the business been running for now? We've been working on this one since 2011, 2012 last year, I think, was when we, when we went... Um, to our sort of first major release, and then September 2013 was our the release that you see now, which is the more finished product. I mean, it's, it is. There's no two ways about it. It is a very impressive site, but as you say, you're working towards actually affording a cup of tea from it. So, how do you fund that? I mean, is this is this something that all entrepreneurs do? They they get to a stage, they have a great idea, they have an absolute belief in what they're doing. You've raised some capital. So how do you survive then as an, an entrepreneur, as an internet online business person? Well, the, the money that we originally raised has taken us to this point in a, and will certainly sustain us to the, for the next three to six months. So that's not really an issue. Over that next three to six months, the issue is, is then to raise the next fund of, of actual, which would be your first proper fund of, uh, round of funding, beg your pardon. And you're going to be doing crowdfunding, We're doing you? this with a, with, with a site called ShareIn at the moment, sharein.com. And they're a brand new crowdfunding platform. Fantastic people uh, based in Scotland. And we are launching with them and they go live to super launch in a few weeks' time. So in a few weeks' time, anybody and everybody will be able to have an opportunity of owning a piece of soundtrack to your 
one which I strongly urge people to take up. The, absolutely. Now, for those people who don't really understand crowdfunding, can you ju just give a brief description of what that sure. is all about? I, I did actually read on some of the notes that you gave us prior to the programme that that too can be a bit of a minefield when it comes to sorting it out. Well, there's, there's many, many options out there. That's, uh, th it's like all of the internet. All life is out there, as you know, and, and, and not necessarily always from this planet, which is good. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but no, it's, it's, it's a nightmare because there's, there's an awful lot, as you know, there's a lot of due diligence one has to do to, to prove to a crowdsourcing, a fund of individuals, that 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 you say is true, that that you say is worth the money that you say it's worth, that all that you indeed say is as it is supposed to be. So you have to go through a lot of legal, a lot of um, accountancy procedures, of course, to make sure that 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 we're providing to our potential investors is entirely legal and expect what they would expect. But the really neat thing is with crowdfunding is from anything from £10 I think is the lowest all the way to hundreds of thousands of pounds if you have them spare in your pocket, you can actually in, uh, invest in lots and lots of businesses like this, have an ownership in them and it reduces your tax bill as well which is, I won't take you through all of it but the tax uh, implications of of investing with soundtrack to your dot com right now are amazing. I, I think you would knock fifty percent off your off your tax. That's what the HMRC are giving out as a as a, a crikey a, as a, you know sort of what's the word I'm failing giving out. We'll, we'll just go with the word information. Information, but essentially the HMRC are funding um, business investing more than anybody else's at the moment. It's really encouraging, isn't it's it? Fantastic. It's, it's pushing growth, it's giving opportunities it's for small incredible. businesses. And, and to be honest with you, uh, you know, any small business, it's the first thing you should be doing is looking at a uh, seed enterprise initiative uh, scheme, or SEIS, and there's one called EIS, which is enterprise initiative scheme. And both of these allow you as a business to be able to offer shares in your organisation where the investor gets an enormous amount of tax relief. In fact, we're talking about if you invested 100,000 on an SEIS scheme right now, you would, that would be paid out of you in three years, you would be paid back in five, and if you didn't, the government would guarantee you get 105% back. Crikey. <laughs> I know. Not many people know about it. But it's it, not a lot of people know that. It is awesome. It is really, it's the, it's the absolute spur that Britain's economy needs. I mean, have you, as a business, have you, I mean, that's, you know, one way of actually funding. I mean, is this sure. the end of a long, narrow path? I mean, have you, did he go to the banks? Did he go to business angels? This, this was the original intention. This the is the original beginning. intention. Because to be honest with you, it, you know, we're, we're crowdsourcing people's musical tastes. And if you're crowdsourcing and, and that's the way you want to go forward, it does seem apparent to us that you should try and crowdfund your investment too. Because the same people should be interested as we are in the outcome. All right, so you've you're sorted that out. You've come up with the great idea. You've got together the right people. You've got together the funding initially to get it through beta testing for the website. Um, and, I'm, and I'm sure there are people out there that are watching this right now and they're thinking, to themselves, well, I could, I could do something similar to that. But the thing is, that it is a very, very sophisticated site. So within your group, you've got the knowledge, you've got the business know-how, and now we're looking at the, the funding. Well, you've got all this in place. Mm-hmm. So how do you then go about telling people, you know, because it's, it's, you know, it's not the kind of thing that you're going to be putting into a search engine, is it? You know, soundtrack to your dot com is not a typical search engine kind of title, is it? So it's how not do snappiest. you drive audience? How do you get people there? It's not there? the snappiest. Well, the simple truth is, is actually, is, it's, 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 by, it's by what it is. It, it, it's not essentially going to catch anybody who say is, is interested in just joining a music service like Google Play or, or Spotify, one of those. But what it is going to interest people is going, do you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to start running this year because obviously that's what I need to do. What music should I listen to? Talk to your friends about it, find stuff out. It's people who are interested in music for specific things you will find with us. So if you... That's the way we're going to attract people I'm to just it. looking for running now. I've got pub. <gasps> there we go, run. you got run. There we go. Here we are, something coming up. So here we've got... Um, yes. I don't want to miss a thing. Fat bottom girls. What are you trying to say? I, I, I looked at this one earlier on, under pressure. Is, isn't this yours? <laughs> it could well be. This is my life. I have found. And there, look, Freddie Mercury, God rest his soul. There he is. Uh, but, I mean, absolutely incredible as well. Now, once that, once that you're on that particular site, or, or you're on your site, if I wanted to, can I purchase those tracks? Sure can, yeah. 
Yeah, we've got a, a, an arrangement with uh, an affiliation actually with iTunes. If you want to buy any of the 25 million songs or any of the songs indeed on here, it'll take you straight to iTunes and you will buy off them. And could I buy a complete playlist? Yes, you can. This is the other neat thing, really, is, is the idea is, is this, this is the one thing we want to do for our users. Is not so much as, yes, of course, we want people to reorganise their music by the way that they actually use music in their life, but in doing so, what we want to do is to make sure that all that information is of an open source. It means that you, the user, can take that information and use it to stream that music on any other device you might have, using any other content provider you might prefer. So our idea is, is to take your musical tastes and allow them to become portable and reusable. Not just for you, of course, but for the rest of us too. I suppose to a certain extent, it's, it's got many of the features that the most popular pieces of software have. For instance, iTunes will allow you to do something similar, but yep. not exactly the same. Yes, you can put playlists together, but it's it's the fact that you've got this, this facility to put together nearly this mixtape. And I understand as well that you can actually send that as a package to your friends? You can, yeah. We call them M cards. To be honest with you, we came up with a few names for it, most which are... <laughs> that you can't repeat. Should, should remain, yeah, should remain just forgotten in the mists of time. But yeah, we call them M cards, musical cards. So essentially it's a greetings card, it's an E card, so it's a Christmas card, it's a birthday card, it's a Valentine's card. And the neat thing is now you can attach a, a playlist, a mixtape of music to it. So essentially, if you want to send Valentine's this year and you want to get it right, Send some music with it. What a great idea. All right, so, you know, once again, though, there is this, this thing that you've got a concept and you've got a name and you've got to drive audience to it. So what techniques have you used to drive an audience to it to get that footfall? Are you working on the principle at one stage you're going to hit a critical mass and it'll just self-perpetuate? Or, or, or was it a really difficult job at the very beginning and very disappointing, I would imagine, you'd go to the website, you've only had two visitors, and the following day there'd only been three, and you think, how do I grow this? Oh, the joy of Google Analytics when it's not working for you. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's very teary moments in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, it is that. But the truth of fact is, is that this is the point. Where we are now is the point where now we can drive on. Part of the monies that we will be raising will all be about marketing ourselves. So it will be about advertising campaigns. It will be about doing sponsorships and joint deals with people so that, you know, there will be part of our lifestyle radio will now start to attract revenues and people hopefully to it. Well, I suppose then for someone that's thinking about doing an internet business, where is the money made from this? Because you look at it at the moment, it's free membership. Is that going to change in the future? We believe in th about three years time, although I'd prefer it to be two for obvious reasons. <laughs> yeah, the sooner we, the better. If we were to say three, <laughs> <laughs> there will be a premium service that will be available and that is far more about managing all of your music and your musical assets in your life so that you're in control of it all not happily Apple or Google or anybody else, it's your music and your musical tastes and that will be the premium service. But the genres themselves, for instance, if I go in and I'm looking for something that I can do the, the ironing to or the washing to or, or play golf to or whatever. Play golf? <laughs> Excuse me. Um, <laughs> doing, doing the ironing which I do on a regular basis, are those genres individually sponsored? They're not at the moment, but of course that's the point. The, the business plan is all there for that to happen because if you're gonna if you're gonna meld lifestyle with people's music, then it all become all of a sudden rather becomes so much more interesting to an advertiser, say Unilever, to go housework radio. Let's talk yeah. to that audience there, and the fact that that audience there is also lined up to our Twitter feed, so people are swapping houseworking stories or whatever or wedding stories also helps to make the whole thing like a little bit more viral and that of course is the trick with the, the internet business is to get it viral because in answer to your question if you look at Twitter if you look at Facebook if you look at uh, um, Spotify at this moment they've all got huge uh, amounts of money attached to them mm -hmm. you know Facebook God knows how much of that how many billion that is Twitter was six billion wasn't it That's IPO? Right. And they're talking four billion for Spotify. Yeah, but Spotify and at the moment doesn't make any money. None of them do, and none of them probably will for a good few years. And that's the point. In the internet, it's becoming the number one. It's having this massive amount of traction that people want to invest in because they feel that if it's making money in 15 years, well, that's all well and good. I'm not so sure that's the right strategy, incidentally, but that's how it seems to me that the internet business model is very much aimed. And I don't think that's necessarily going to be that way for all time.
You're watching uh, Business Connections Live. Steve Harley with you here. Hope you're having a really good evening. We are live, where, as you can probably tell, even the mistakes are left in. Uh, my guest this evening is Phil Smith. He's from a website called Soundtrack to Your dot com and it is a fascinating website if uh, you, it's the old days isn't it if you remember cassettes they were like a piece of tape in a plastic thing and it would drag itself past the head God, where, where did they ever go i remember them when they first came out and what you could do, you could put together a mix of your favourite songs. And the thing was, it, be, it then actually had value. You could give that to maybe your friends because it had a, a selection of different tracks. And it became a re... Yeah, never see it again. And it became actually something that carried a bit of value. And that's really what this is in the... 21st century, what we've got here is a way to put together the tracks that mean something to you. How often have you listened to the radio, listened to a record, and the moment you start hearing a track or a song, it evokes memories. It, it just tells you, it just brings back that feeling, a warm summer's day, maybe feeling very happy, feeling very sad, but that's exactly what it, music can do, and that's what they're achieving here on Soundtrack to Your Dot com to simply go on the website, check out some of the different um, artists or the different selections that are on there. All right, then let's uh, find out what's been happening in the past week when it comes to the world of business news. And with uh, the latest news bulletin on this edition of Business Connections Live, here's Linda Bazant. This is Business Connections Live with the news for Wednesday the 8th of January 2014. A poll of more than 8,000 businesses by the British Chambers of Commerce shows that Britain was growing at a solid pace. However, it cautioned that cash flow continued to be a concern. John Longworth, Director General of the BCC, commented, we must give companies the opportunity to get the finance they need to go out and trade the world if we are to succeed in rebalancing the economy. Finance directors of large quoted companies are as keen to invest again as they were before the downturn and are gearing up for a year of expansion and investment in 2014, according to a report by Deloitte. It found that concerns over economic uncertainty had fallen to their lowest level in three and a half years, while their appetite to take risks by investing again was at a six-year high. A plan to help alternative lenders and crowdfunding sites compete with banks is being drawn up by ministers as part of a government initiative to boost small businesses as part of the Challenger Businesses Programme which began in October. The new lenders have been praised by the Bank of England for helping to bridge the gap in small business finance. Energy companies should be simpler and more open with businesses about the prices they charge for electricity and gas, says the Federation for Small Businesses. The government recently forced the big utility suppliers to make tariffs more transparent for householders and the FSB have argued that the same regime should apply to their commercial customers. Intel has announced that laptops featuring 3D camera technology developed by the chipmaker will go on sale this year. It said seven firms would release products that contained its software and hardware which would be identified by the RealSense brand. At a press conference in Las Vegas, Intel showed how one of its depth sensors could be used to interpret gesture controls and to separate foreground objects from the background. Hundreds of thousands of young people feel they have nothing to live for, with the long-term unemployed being particularly pessimistic about their prospects, a youth charity has warned. The warning is based on the findings of a YouGov poll for the Prince's Trust Makari Youth Index, which also reports that 40% of jobless young people have experienced symptoms of mental illness. Paul Brown, Prince's Trust Director, said, we need to recognise that unemployment doesn't just lead to economic disadvantage for young people, but can scar them. And if you have any comments or views on these or any other stories, please contact us on all social media or email studio at businessconnectionslive.com.
And my thanks to Linda Bazant, my guest this evening here on Business Connections Live is Phil Smith. Before we get back to Phil, um, once again, just a reminder, if you are watching this on YouTube, please do subscribe to the channel. If you're watching it on businessconnectionslive.com, uh, please leave a comment. Tell us what you think of the program. If you do want to get in contact with us, maybe you'd like to appear on the program or you'd like to maybe pitch your business. We, uh, we love people doing that. 60 seconds, two minutes even. We'll give you two minutes. We don't mind. 120 seconds. Get yourself a video camera, stand in front of it, and tell us what your business does, and we'll put it out on one of the programs here. And that's really what Business Connections Live is all about. It's about helping small to medium scale enterprises and also larger businesses who maybe forget uh, maybe what they should be doing. Now, if you do want to get in contact with us, just simply contact us here on that email address. It is studio at businessconnectionslive.com. Now, as I said, my guest this evening is Phil Smith. He's from a website. We'll find out if it's actually just a website or if it's a company as well. It is soundtrack to your dot com. Is is that the name of the company or is or is it? It's the name of the product actually. The name of the company is oh this is so awful, but it's called Filtinium dot com. Filtinium dot com. Well limited actually, but yeah. <laughs> the reason being is it's a, there's a lot of people called Phil who were in the original setting up of all this, and one or two others being kind of rather sad trekkies some reason decided to come up with the word Filtinium and I put my hand up here. It's you, me. It's you. You should be taken outside and shot from the soles of your feet up. You know it. <laughs> uh, and the, the only time that you ever know that this is a true disaster is, uh, and Pete Stevens can attest to this, was the day that you go in for the first time and have a meeting with anybody and I think it was lawyers actually we went to see that particular morning and I walked in and he said well you tell them who we are. <laughs> so I said we're, we're Filtinium and uh, you know the thing when you have to write it down four times and people are going, no, it's not. That's not a name. <laughs> You're just having a laugh. Yes. Yeah. Let, let's, let's go back to what we were talking about just before the news mm. uh, with Linda. We were, we were talking about the actual site. W where do you see it? Do you see it? Is it a social site? Is it, are we talking social media here or are we talking about a service? I mean, w what is it that we've, actually, uh, that we've actually got? How do you perceive it to be? I suppose really if you're going to be whew, a little odd about it, I'd say it's a portal for personal music because essentially what it is, it, yes it's sharing stuff, yes it's using your Facebook and it's using Twitter and LinkedIn and all the other wonderful things to say, I'm listening to this sort of stuff at the moment, what do you think, which is kind of nice. But it's more than that, it's also a library of personal taste that anybody can dip into and use and as they see fit. So it's, it's kind of a portal of all things musical, but specifically aimed at the sort of personal perspective about how you use music. And as I said, because we meta tag all of this information, it's like nothing else anybody else can build. And that's the trick of what we've done. So it's the best of all of it, isn't it, really? So. And, and you are showing another side. Uh, for instance, Facebook tends, I mean, Facebook really has taken off in many respects. Of course it has. I mean, look at, look at the, value, the value of it. Not that it's making great deals of money, but the size, the scale of what it is. And of course, the problems that they're running in against are that they can't monetize it as well as they thought they were going to. And of course, this actually does transfer across different portals quite well, doesn't it? It does, The yeah. mobile telephone portal, the, the, uh, the, the pads, and also the, the laptops. I mean, it, it works on any level, doesn't it? Yes, it do. well, let's be, uh, right now it does not work on the mobile level. Well, this is, our original strategy actually was, because in, in 2011 when we started doing it, I don't think we could ever realise just how immense and how quickly the mobile and smartphones sort of just became de rigueur. You know, you don't talk to people who don't have one or don't know of one these mm -hmm. days. And of course, with the smartphone means you're using it like your internet connection. So we realized very quickly we had to start with the desktop you know the old-fashioned website service and then we moved into the tablet which we've done and now you can use it on your ipad or on your samsung and we are four weeks away six weeks away from actually releasing our mobile version which then gets us to the point where we need to be so yeah it's it's a tricky one believe me who, who did you then as a business you've got these very talented people mm. who've got different skills within your business but it can't all be done internally who did you turn to to get words of wisdom advice and maybe just to even look in from the outside and say do you know what yeah it's an all right idea but have you thought about doing this who are your mentors the ones that we've used have um, been terrific really we've, um, we've got a great group of people we have um, three or four people who are on our board who've um, 
who one or two have done internet businesses of their own. One guy did an amazing motorbike business on, online, made a fortune and sold it. We've got people from the city, we've got people from legal, we've got people from marketing who are all actually sitting with us and have been given us the most awesome advice. And to be honest with you, if that's one of the things you really ought to consider is the quality of your business is probably at the beginning is predicated upon the quality of the professional advice and skills and enthusiasms those people can bring to the party. And we've been blessed. We've uh, been and blessed. so how did you go about finding them? I'm a small business, I start up, got a great idea, got a team of people around me, got someone who can write the code, I got there's someone who's come up with a great idea and there's a great front man out there. How do you go about finding these people then? Well, as I said, this was the, this was the thing, is, is that everybody who's come to the party has bought with their own sort of network of really tremendous people. So when we needed people to, you know, to talk to us about mobile strategies and about um, you know, sort of network architectural strategies, Pete uh, and the people he brought to bear were, were just astonishing. It was so the were best they of friends breed. then? Or, or they used to be. I think we've all fallen out <laughs> now. They used to be friends, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and if... Yes. And if I mean, I mean, and did you look at the profile of your board? And did you, I mean, I remember in, in the old days uh, the, we, when we were looking at um, applying for... Uh, radio franchises in the days when the, it was a different kind of setup, and you would put together a board that you felt the fran the the Ofcom as it was at the stage or the Radio Authority, you felt you would put together a board that had all the the criteria ticked. So you would have the retired general, you'd have the local newspaper, the local big business person, and so you'd work your way through it. And you felt that you then had a balanced board. I, if you had to do the same kind of thing, uh, I wouldn't say it was that. Um structured in that regard but n nonetheless we've certainly ended up in that way uh, and I think it's been happenstance as we've gone along and we've realized okay well we need some you know we need more expertise here we definitely need advice there uh, one two or three of us have always had um, you know a network of people either Sarah or Pete from their technical backgrounds and city backgrounds or mine from the sort of exec search background we have networks of people that we've always been fortunate enough to plug into they within themselves have brought even greater skills to bear so it's, it's, I suppose it's one of the great benefits about starting this um, in your mid-40s rather than starting a business in your 20s, which isn't so much as I've got, we've all got 25 years plus mm -hmm. of super people to actually draw on. And that is massively important because on the days when it's not going so well, these are the guys and the, and the ladies who will drag you up and make you feel okay and make you get going again. If you are just joining us uh, for the first time or maybe... Uh, you're watching this and you think to yourself, well, I've, I've kind of jumped in, I haven't half been listening, but this is sounding interesting now. Um, my guest this evening is Phil Smith from a company called soundtrack to your Dot com. Uh, the website, very interesting actually, the way it's been funded, the way it's been marketed. It, it's, a, it's a social website, but what it's doing is it's pulling the music of your life together. Now, there are some radio stations out there that claim to do this, the soundtrack to your life. But to a certain extent, how do they know? The only person that really knows what the soundtrack to your life is, is you. And here's an ideal opportunity for somebody, yes you, to sit down and put the tracks down that really mean something to you. And it isn't just all the tracks in one particular hit. What you can do, you can actually categorise them into different aspects of your life. And that's what's so clever about this. So regardless, I mean, here are just some of the actual different users uh, that are here at the moment and uh, you can just see I mean it's just fascinating it tells a little bit more about them uh, you've got the different um, criteria so you can go through the different things you got these um, these are the kind of typical playlists that we've got there so that's that's what this site is is all about but to give you more of an insight you're gonna love the northern accent on this it's fantastic <laughs> if you go onto the website and you want to find out mm. more about the, a little bit of audio on this would be nice but if you could have a little bit of a listen to, to this particular video here, and it'll tell you a little bit more about what um, soundtrack to your.com is all about. And you'll find this particular video actually on their website. And you'll notice too that there's no music on it, which I think is amazing. No music on it. And the reason and the reason for that is because you've got to be so careful. Is it licensed? Who does it belong to? So a great voiceover from soundtrack to your com have a look have a watch at this at soundtrack to your we're creating a musical democracy where your voice can be heard it's a place to create play and share meaningful playlists associating them with memories past present and future publish soundtracks to the community earn points and establish yourself as a musical stylist 
We're interested in finding out who has the most musical influence on our charts. Charts made of the music that's important to you, not dictated by sales. Or Interesting, actually, this video. You were telling me earlier on that you had a whole range of ideas concerning putting this together, this, this whole explanation of what the site was about. Mm. And you thought, we're going to do something a little bit different. And you were started off with sock puppets. We did, yes. How old are you again? <laughs> Grow up. <laughs> but very clever idea, something like that. What, what, I mean, that's an expensive investment to be making. It is. And you've got to get it right when you start doing something, particularly with that amount of animation in it. I mean, who was, who was the instigator of that? Was that you once again? Yeah, I'm afraid it was, it was me and, and another Phil, actually. There's another, Phil Sofa was the guy who did all of the, uh, the animation on there, and he brought it all together. And the voiceover artist is, uh, is a wonderful chap called Nigel Bourne, actually, who... Uh, I'll tell you about, more about him another day. But no, Phil brought it together and we sort of scripted it between ourselves and what we wanted to say. But as you pointed out, the thing that we've never really got a head around, and I think I never will, is just how enormous a music site actually is. So if somebody says, well, what does it do? It's kind of, when do I stop, you know? Pull the plug, you know, because otherwise I'll talk for a while. Yeah, I mean, it really is very difficult, isn't it? Because music is so big, and also so varied. I can't remember whether I've asked this or not, but what, what were the big problems? Where, where was the hole that you fell into? Was there a moment you thought, crikey, this isn't really going to work? Uh, what, so what were, you know, you, one day you got up and you thought, we're doomed. Has there been that moment and then you were able to dig yourself out of it? There hasn't been that moment. There's, been, there's definitely been walking around the perimeter of that particular mm. volcano in so much as the fact that... Um, one of the big things that really happened to us was the, the, the very swift realisation, as I mentioned earlier, about the speed and uptake of, um, of mobile and smartphone as, um, as a delivery for the system, that we, we did have this enormous panic where we had to sort of say, right, well, we've got to just do desktop, then we've got to go this, and then, which is not what we anticipated at all. We anticipated being in a position to have one product that we could deploy across all platforms, and that was our initial sort of way of going forward and, 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 and made a sensible one, you know? And then, of course, it just becomes technically horrendous. So, yeah, that was the one that really sort of felt like you tripped up a curbstone kind of a thing. Not quite a brick wall, but, yeah. Well on the way, well yeah. on the way. Yeah. Listen, I'm going to ask you to give um, some advice to, to people. I mean, we've, we've called this program How to Start Your Internet Business and Be Your Own Boss. It seems very much as a case of actually sharing the responsibility amongst a, a, a troop of skilled individuals so. who have the appropriate skills. But, but what is important, that they do need a leader somewhere along the line. I'm going to ask you to give some of your advice very shortly, uh, straight down the camera lens, on what you should be thinking about, what you should be considering when it comes to starting your own internet business but before we do that uh, next week on the program we've got the welcome return of Steve Mills you might remember he was on a little while back at the end well end of last year and we were talking about LinkedIn the first 10 minutes alone is worth watching if you want to use LinkedIn to actually build and get business from the internet and from social networking a very talented guy and luckily we've got him back again next week if you just want a bit of a taster of what uh, he was all about have a look at this You know, if you're thinking about getting into the whole world of social media, we've, I know, yes, I know, we've already covered it once before where we were looking at the likes of uh, Twitter. But there is one biggie out there at the moment, and that biggie that is out there, the one that really dominates the business scene, of course, is LinkedIn. Now, talk to some people and they will say, well, yeah, it's okay, I use it a bit. Other people, well, they just don't use it at all. And really, is, a, is it a case of being sort of a happy compromise between the two? Or should you, as a business owner, be thinking about using LinkedIn and seeing your profits increase? That seems a kind of an appealing proposition, doesn't it? Uh, with us tonight, we've got the man who's going to be telling us all. It's Steve Mills. Steve, it's great to have you with us. Thank you very much for coming. I got the initial interest probably about 10 years ago. I joined LinkedIn like many people do and found myself on there, but not really doing very much mm -hmm. to be honest for probably about the first four or five years then really came that social media boom where everybody was talking you know you got to be on social media and as a, a marketing person I thought mm, I need to take this thing a little bit more seriously so I decided that I was going to um, really invest some time and effort in really understanding uh, one particular social media and that was LinkedIn. For example, I've got 30,000 Twitter followers 
which, which is great, but I've only got 1,800 1, connections on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. And yet I win far more business personally from, uh, from LinkedIn because of the quality of those connections. All those 1,800 people, they all know me. Uh, because I'm on there on a regular basis, I comment, I use video on there, and, and I've become, a in my little world, um, a, a person that everybody knows. Is I'm going to be able to send this message, this product, if you will, out to all my LinkedIn connections, which is 1,800 people, all my Twitter connections, which is 30,000 people, plus all the people who are in my 50 groups, you're allowed to join 50 groups on LinkedIn. That's incredibly Absolutely powerful. incredible. Guess how many people that comes to? Uh, give me, I have no idea. 1.5 million people. What you should be doing is, is the, I suppose the number one thing is setting up your personal and company profile. That's an absolute must, you've got to do that. Once you're doing that, get on to LinkedIn and start using it. You know, what's the worst thing that could happen? You know, the answer is you might win some business, so get on there, get using LinkedIn, and use it in a consistent manner. The third thing I'd say would be to use groups. Groups are incredibly powerful. There's many, many ways of doing so. I've highlighted two or three tonight, but there's lots of other things that you need to know in order to utilize this fantastic uh, opportunity on, the link, on LinkedIn. The other thing which we didn't talk about tonight is getting recommended. I always believe the that, endorsements. Yeah, I was the just endorsements. About to ask you that. Yes, yeah, yeah, indeed. yeah. The recommendations are really, really powerful. You know, it's great. I can go onto LinkedIn and tell you all about how wonderful my business is. But on LinkedIn, I've got over 80 recommendations from other people who've been onto my seminars, saying how you know that this has really made a big difference in their business. And and everybody listening today can do exactly the same thing. So get recommendations. Get quality recommendations. You're watching Business Connections Live and he'll be with us next week. We're looking really looking forward to that. It should be an absolutely fantastic uh, program, as has been tonight. It's been a real insight. If you are thinking about starting an internet business, Phil Smith from Soundtrack to Your dot com um, has just it's just been fascinating we were just talking there and uh, just very briefly about the name once again if you could have called it something else would you <laughs> <laughs> something just perhaps a little longer yeah. no not longer just, no, just, no 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 just another word that's all it needs the man with the business card the size of a table <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, i've got one of those all right l listen phil I'm, I'm going to invite you if you could we're, we've got people who are watching this who are maybe um their table their tabletop entrepreneurs, they're thinking about maybe starting a business, they want to do something online. For a lot of people, of course, looking online, it seems to be an easy option for them. They, they think that because the technology is there and they understand Google Analytics, they understand about backlink, blah, 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 blah. They understand about that. How do they turn that into a business? What would be the advice that you would give them? I'll tell you what, do it straight down number three. Tell us who you are. Okay. Tell us the company name, what do you say it? <laughs> give us that, that piece of advice really that's going to help us. Do my level launch. best. Bun? I'll do my level Thank best. Thank you very much. So I'm, I'm Phil Smith, soundtracktoyour.com, and if I was as truthful as I can be, the things I would absolutely tell you to do about setting up your own business is, more than anything else, believe in your idea. Hone that idea until that idea isn't an idea, it's I, your idea. That's what it's got to be. And then you've got to drive it. You've got to find the right people and work as hard as you can. It's never going to be easy, but it's a heck of a lot of fun. That's it. Good luck. That's it. I thought at the moment you were going to say, hello, I'm, I'm the MD of this, that and the other, and <laughs> I haven't got a clue. I don't know what I'm doing. I <laughs> don't know what I'm doing here, really. <laughs> it's all been luck. <laughs> It was, none of it was judgment on my part. It was the people that surround me. Listen, it's been an absolutely fascinating uh, hour. 60 minutes has flown by. I can't believe it's gone that quick. And, you know, there, is, there are bits of information in there that is a terrific insight into the, the business that you're actually um, developed and you're actually making. So it's fantastic. And it's been great for you to have you here. Uh, from my point of view, the, looking at what you can get back from the Inland Revenue, God love them. I mean, all of that, invaluable information. 
um, tremendous for us entrepreneurs because it's you know there are real real economic spurs out there that we can use to all of our advantages you know well can we wish you and uh, your other directors the absolute very best as well thank you fantastic um, opportunity to meet you thank you very much for coming in and uh, my thanks as well to their pr agency wigwam who do an, a sterling job really a terrific pr agency so our that thanks to all the team at uh, wigwam as well from me steve harland thank you very much indeed for joining us as i said we're going to be back next week mr mills is going to be joining us uh, until then have yourselves an absolutely fantastic week thank you for watching business connections live from all the team here in the studio. We'll see you next Wednesday. Bye for now. Bye-bye.